Number five, Tim Duncan. So let's go over the career resume before we get to the the playoff stuff. The career resume is quite simple. Ten times. First team All-NBA, that's tied for the fourth most ever. Three-time second team, two-time third team All-NBA. That is 15 total All-NBA teams. That is tied for the second most ever. He's a two-time league MVP. And years one through eight of his career, first eight seasons of his career, he was top five MVP finisher, nine total MVP top five finishes. He's a 15. Team-time all-defensive player. That is the most in NBA history by a wide margin. He was 21-12-3 as a rookie. And in fact, he was 21-12-3 for averages over his first 12 seasons, which speaks to the consistency. His rookie year, he was 21-12-3. and And the first 12 years of his career combined, he was 21 points, 12 rebounds, 3 assists, with all-world caliber defense every step of the way. He is fifth all-time in blocks. He is sixth all-time in rebounds. He is 15th all-time in points. That's all in the regular season. Now to the playoffs. The top line of the playoffs are this. He is a five-time champion and a three-time finals MVP with one additional finals appearance. That one, the one of the most famous finals ever, the 2013 finals against LeBron in the Miami Heat. His career playoff average, 20 points, 10 rebounds. From 99 to 07, his nine-year playoff prime. In those nine years, he won four rings, he won three finals MVPs, and he averaged 24 points, 14, 13 rebounds, four assists, three blocks per game, in 40 minutes per game, on 50% shooting. So that's the general Tim Duncan stuff. But as we do with everyone on this list, we then go year by year to their playoff career. Oh, and by the way, I should mention this. Playoffs every single season, 50 or more wins every single year of his career, except for the year that there was only 50 games. The 66-game season, he won 50 games. The only year he didn't win 50 games was the year there was only 50 games. And that, by the way, is one of the main reasons I have Duncan 5 and Kobe 6. Is Kobe had that little golf in the middle of his career post Shaq pre pow Duncan never had that. 50 wins in the playoffs every year of his career. All right, so let's go to his rookie year. 1998, his first career playoff game, 32 and 10. Opens round two against Carl Malone with 33 and 10 but they lose in round two. But as a rookie, is dropping 30 and 10s in the postseason. 1999, facing Shaq in round two. Averages for the series, 29 and 11, and sweeps Shaquille O'Neal out of the playoffs. Kobe was on that team too, but Kobe's too young to take any flack for that. He had 37 and 14 to go up 3-0 on on Shaq, and 33 and 14 to finish off the sweep. By the way, Shaq, who over the next three years after that in the finals would average 36 points per game, he held Shaq to 24 points per game. In his first career finals game ever against the Knicks in 99, 33 and 16. For the series, averaged 27 and 14, finals MVP. And that season, the Spurs went 15 and 2 in the playoffs. It gets forgotten because his lockout year, first year without Jordan, that team kicked everybody's ass 15 and two for the playoffs. The next year he was injured. So the Spurs made the playoffs, but he got injured at the end of the season, meniscus thing. They held him out. So he didn't get to defend his title. 2001 against Dirk in round two averages 27 and 17 in the 01 Western Conference finals against the defending champion Lakers in game two. He had 40 and 15, but that Lakers team was on the short list of maybe best Lakers team ever. They then sweep San Antonio. San Antonio swept him in 99. The Lakers sweep him back in 2001. 2002, against the Lakers in round two, he's absolutely unbelievable, but the Lakers are too good. But what does Duncan do? He is in game one, 26 points, 21 rebounds, five assists, four blocks, but they lose. 
in game five, down 3-1. He has 34 points and 25 rebounds, but they lose. For the series, he averages 29, 17, and 5, but they lose in 5, which speaks to what a juggernaut the Lakers still were. Now 2003, his perfect season, okay? 2002, he had won, he had won an MVP. He wins another one in 03, and it is truly his perfect season. So what does he do? 19, 16, and 5, round one average against Phoenix. Gets the Lakers in round two. Has 37 and 16 to end the series. Averages 28, 12, and 5 for the series. Round three, Western Arms Finals against Dirk. Starts the Western Arms Finals with 40, 15, and 7. Tied one game apiece, game three. Has 34 points, 24 rebounds, 6 assists, 6 blocks. 34, 24, 6, and 6 to go up 2-1. Averages for the series, 28, 17, 6, and 3. And in the finals, a total annihilation of the Nets. Game one of the finals, some of these box scores are so bananas. Game one of the finals, 32 points, 20 rebounds, 6 assists, 3 steals, 7 blocks. 32, 26, 3, and 7. A near quadruple double to end the finals. 21 points, 20 rebounds, 10 assists, 8 blocks. And, and for, for the finals average, 24 points, 17 rebounds, 5 assists, 5 blocks. Just absolutely bananas production to win his second finals MVP in his second ring. 2004, another round. They kept playing the Lakers in round two instead of the conference finals. Another round two battle with the Lakers. Uh, they lose after being up 2-0. Duncan averaged 21 and 12. Uh, and that's the, you know, the famous uh Derek Fisher games that that year, where Derek Fisher hits the 0.4 second shot after Duncan hits the crazy shot. But Duncan averaged 21 and 12 gave Shaq fits for the series. 2005, another angry playoff run for Duncan. 39 and 14 in round one against Mello and Denver to go up 3-1. 25 and 10 average in round two against Ray Allen. Against Nash and Amari in the Western Conference Finals, 27 and 14 for the series. To close them out, goes 31, 15, 4, and 3 in game five. Now he's back in the finals against the defending champion Pistons. Ben Wallace and Rashid Wallace are their front line. He opens the finals with the 24 and 17, and then it goes seven in game seven, has 25 and 11, wins another finals MVP, averaging 20 and 14 against a great defensive team and a team that was this close to winning back-to-back titles in the 05 Pistons. 2006, see, this is where you remember, like, man, if if not for the Derek Fisher shot, does Duncan win the ring that year in 04? And then in 06, what happens? He has an all-time duel with Dirk in round two, averaged 32 and 12 for the series, down 3-1, has 36 and 12, and then in game seven, has 41, 15, and 6 in an overtime loss. The what if there is, that's the game where the Mavs are down three, Dirk's driving to the basket, Manu slaps him on the elbow, Dirk gets the end one, they end up winning in overtime. They then go on to lose to the Miami Heat in the finals. But that's another, gosh, would the Spurs have won that title? But 07, the angry Duncan years, the years he didn't, coming off when he didn't win the title, look out. Another ring, this time he sweeps 22-year-old LeBron. Biggest challenge was again in round two rather than the Western Conference Finals. It was against Phoenix. He goes for 27 points, 14 rebounds, four blocks per game, including a 33-19 and game. In the finals, he averaged 18-12. and They gave Tony Parker the finals MVP. I didn't really agree with it then. I don't agree with it now, but fine, it's whatever. And then it looks like maybe... We're getting to the end. 08, he opens his title offense with a 40, 15, and 5 against Phoenix. Averages 25 and 15 for the series. They lose, though, to the Lakers in the Western Conference Finals, despite the fact that in game one, he has a 30 point, 18 rebound, two assists, two steal, four block game. And for the, in the final game of the Western Conference Finals, has triple double 19 points, 15 rebounds, 10 assists, but they lose. And then 2009, 2010, 2011. He only wins one series. His averages drop to 17 and 10. And it's like, oh, okay. 
all right, so the Spurs, you know, they won their four titles in eight years. It's unbelievable, but they're done. 2012, though, it's like, wait, are the Spurs going to win the title? They open the playoffs with 10 straight victories. But then if you remember, they're up 2-0 on OKC. Then it all clicks for OKC. OKC wins four straight. 2013, the Spurs are back in the finals. We are now 15 years removed from their first championship. In the Ray Allen game, he has 30 points and 17 rebounds. In the game to win the title, he has 30 points and 17 rebounds, including 25 in the first half but they lose the most heartbreaking championship game ever. In game seven, they lose. Duncan misses that little bunny that could have tied the game, but he did put up 24 and 12. So how do they respond? They win the damn title the next year. 2014, he averages 18 and 11 against Durant and OKC to win the Western Conference Finals at age 37. To win the finals, uh, to win the Western Conference Finals in six games, He averages 18 and 11, 21 and 10 to open the finals, averaged 15 and 10. And that year he could have won finals MVP. Again, they give it to Kawhi. And then 2015, he's 38 years old. They're playing a game seven against the Clippers. That's the Chris Paul falling down bank in game. He has 27 and 11 at 38 years old at 37 years old. He he averaged 18 and 11 to beat Durant. At 36 years old, he has a 30 and 17 to win the title, and Ray Allen beats him. He's sixth all time in playoff minutes. He or second all time in playoff minutes. Pardon me. Sixth all time in playoff points. First all time in playoff blocks. Third all time in playoff rebounds, behind only Wilton Russell. He has 103 career 20 and 10 playoff games, which is the fourth most all time. He's the fifth best player of the last 50 years. He is Tim Duncan. We have a Tim Duncan caller. Let's squeeze her in. Tim Duncan at five. Finally, finally, I have I have nothing negative to say. Um, he's getting the respect that he deserves. He has five rings in three different decades, which P.S. makes him sound like he's a hundred, but he's not. It just timed out perfectly where that's how it worked out. Anyways, that's it. Two time MVP and P.S. also let other members of the team shine. So yes, Tim Duncan top five. I mean, probably could be higher, but five is fine. So listen, five is fine, and appreciate Ms. Beatles' help there. He couldn't be higher. I have, you guys know the four names ahead of him. There is no real argument to put him ahead of any of those four. But I also don't think there's any argument to put him behind Kobe or Shaq or Dream or Bird. I I think Duncan is solidly where he is. The fifth best player of the last 50 years. Guy won 50 games every year. Was one of the, in my opinion, the second best defensive player on this entire list behind only Akeem, the consummate pro, the consummate teammate, the consummate winner, Tim Duncan. Hey, thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button to get more from the show and make sure to click the bell to get notified every time new content drops. Check out full episodes of What's Right wherever you get your podcasts or just click the link in the description below.